Good morning, afternoon, and evening. Whatever time you're tuning into this broadcast, it's Ish Issues, Coach Ish, whatever you want to call me. Broadcasting live from the Ponderosa, and it is a beautiful day I am. Beautiful day I am. So glad I chose to um, start making videos on my patio. I think this is a dope, you know. It's already, it's already my favorite spot in the, in the crib, just looking out at my yard and just, you know, just chilling. But today, the weather is like perfect, you know what I'm saying? Perfect fall weather. Anyway, I digress. Uh, let's talk some boxing, man. Let's talk some uh, Jose Benavidez versus Jamal Charlo. Um, this is going to be a good fight. It's going to be a good fight. It's going to be an entertaining fight for as long as it lasts. Um, it could last the whole 12. I don't think it will, though. I don't think it will, though. Um, let me break down both fighters a little bit. Rudimentary breakdown of both fighters. So, you got Jose Benavidez. Uh, Jose Benavidez is the smaller, is a naturally smaller guy. Um, you know, um, really he's a welterweight, honestly, he's really a welterweight, who's, um, I think he did his best work at welterweight, he's coming up to 54, fought Danny at 54, that was a great fight between him and Danny, um, I thought Danny, Danny showed out on him though, Danny showed out on him though, that was probably... Danny's best performance was against Benavidez. Um, yeah, his best perf- That's That was the fight where he really looked elite. A lot of his other fights, you know, he, he, he got some elite performances against some lesser uh, opposition. But when he steps up in class, like, I haven't really been uh, impressed with Danny Garcia's performances. Wasn't impressed, you know, against, uh, you know, he lost to Errol Spence, but I wasn't even impressed with his performance in the, in the loss, you know, when when they talked to him and like what was the problem? And he said I couldn't get past the jab. I was like, what? You couldn't get past the jab? See what Terence Crawford did with the jab, with Errol Spence's jab. It just lets you know the the, the different class of fighters. Er, Terence Crawford was able to take that same jab. That Earl Spence used for Danny Garcia, turn it on his head, turn it, turn his jab against him. Basically, he used his jab against him. So not only did he get past the jab, he was able to turn Spence's jab against him. Because every time Spence would throw the jab, he would make him pay for it, and then he would make him pay for it with his own jab. When he dropped Spence the first time, it was off a jab from the southpaw position. They switched to southpaw, whatever. I ain't gonna. That's another. That's a whole nother breakdown video. I'm just saying. When he said that, I was like, "What?" You know what I mean? Because for an elite fighter, which is what Danny was always billed to be by his pops, of course. But you know, you remember when Dan, when Floyd was still fighting? He was supposed to be like Danny and Floyd, the two most gifted fighters in in you know in the whole thing. But you know, he was getting his ass kicked by. Amir Khan until he knocked him out. Um, I thought he lost against Mauricio Herrera. He got the got gifted a victory. Uh, put on uh, respectable performances against um, the likes of Sean Porter and Keith Thurman, and uh, came up short. Uh, Errol Spence came up really short, um, and you know his kind of bounce back fight was at 54. First fight at 54 was against Jose Benavidez, and he beat Jose Benavidez. Now. Danny was able to hit Jose Benavidez with pretty much whatever he wanted to hit him with. Uh, which leads me to Jose Benavidez's flaws. Um, Jose Benavidez is an emotional fighter, right? Like, different fighters derive their, uh, you know, their, their best attributes are different things. Or they're a different kind of fighter. There's fighters who fight off emotion. They're emotional fighters. They get in a bag when they start 
talking and taunting and, 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 and you know what I'm saying? When they get mad, you know, that's when they're at their best. Um, some fighters are cerebral fighters. Um, they don't really fight off emotion. They're pretty even keel in the ring. They're not rattled by taunts and they're not uh, swayed by the crowd and they're constantly thinking. And that's uh, it's like, you know, example of that is like a Floyd Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, and then there's athletic fighters who they're the biggest thing that they rely on. Not saying that they're devoid of skill, but the biggest thing that they rely on is their athleticism. Like, you know, I was talking about, uh, you know, um, Jermaine Taylor is a good example back in the day. Jermaine Taylor achieved greatness in the sport, beat some, some uh, you know, beat the likes of Bernard Hopkins and, you know, people like that. Uh, pretty much almost solely off of athleticism. So you have athletic fighters, you have cerebral fighters, and you have emotional fighters. Um, David Ben, uh, not David, um, Jose Benavidez is an emotional fighter. That's why he's doing all this stuff in the press conference. It's not that he's, you know, people say, oh, you know, the loudest one is the weakest one. I, you know, I think, I think the Benavidez family got heart. I don't think they scared. I don't think they shook. I like them. They actually, they're warriors. You know what I'm saying? But Jose Benavidez is, you know, he's an emotional dude. He's an emotional dude. He feed off of his emotions. That's why he was, you know, standing up and, and, you know, all that talking all tough and stuff like that. He he has to get himself riled up in order to be effective. That's why it seemed like he got every, you know, big fight. He seemed like he got beef with whoever he's fighting. He has to be in that mode in order to be uh, successful. And that's when he thrives in fights. He thrives when he is, uh, he got skills. Don't get me wrong. He got skills. Uh, he's very talented. Um, and he got skills. I think he relies most on his talent, you know, more on talent and emotions than skill. A little bit of skill because in, in the fights, like, he makes a lot of mistakes because of that. And that's the thing about emotional fighters. A lot of times they make a lot of mistakes. You know what I'm saying? They make a lot of mistakes because they're fighting off emotion. You know what I'm saying? They're mad. They're taunting. They're talking. They're, you know what I'm saying? They're getting riled up. They're getting their bag. You know what I'm saying? There's people who, boxing, basketball, whatever. That's that's just the the that's that's what they have to tap into in order to be effective. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's an that's an to me that's an emotional fighter. You know what I mean? They're they're at their best when they're emotional. So Benavidez, you know that whole Danny Garcia fight, he fought emotional. Um, and as a result, he was getting caught with a lot of stuff, dropping his hands, he's taunting, he's making faces, he's, you know, talking to him. You know what I'm saying? He got to be, he got to be, fighters like that got to be the bully. You know what I mean? They, they, they got to be the, they got to be the bully. They got to be intimidating dudes and, you know, talking to him and beating their chest and in the fight, dropping his hands and telling them to come on and, you know what I'm saying? That's emotional fighters. Benavi, Jose Benavidez Jr. is is one of those dudes. Now, there are fighters who are a little bit of all of them. Terrence Crawford is a little bit of all of them. He is a cerebral fighter until he figures out he can beat you however he wants to beat you. And if you piss him off, then he becomes an emotional fighter. And when he becomes an emotional fighter, you're in trouble. Because, like I tell people about Terrence Crawford, he really is a brawler who has tremendous boxing skills, who also happens to be a tremendous boxer. But his his mentality is a brawler. He likes to brawl. It's what he really likes to do. He would really rather just rumble, just go in there and just fight. But he's also really gifted, right? Jose Benavidez is, 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 is a similar fighter in that regard. You know what I'm saying? He really wants to get in there and brawl with you. He really want to get in there and, and fight. He really, he's a fighter. You know what I'm saying? He's more more of a fighter than a boxer. A boxer want to get in there and stay safe. Danny is a boxer. Danny is a boxer puncher. But Danny is a boxer. 
boxer counter puncher. That's what Danny is. And Danny was in there outboxing Benavidez. Now, Jamel Charlo, Jamal Charlo, I'm sorry. Jamal Charlo. Uh, Jamal Charlo is an athletic fighter. He relies more on his athleticism than anything else. He's an emotional guy. I think he's another dude that gets, he thrives in those emotional, he, he gotta be, you know what I'm saying? He might be different now. This is supposed to be, according to him, the new Charlo, so he might be a little different now. Um, but both of the Charlo twins are pretty much high heads in a sense. And they're at their best, and they put on their best performances when they pissed off, and they fight and pissed off. Um, but at the same time, Jamel Charlo, Jamal Charlo don't necessarily fight with his emotions. He fight with his athleticism. He's very athletic, moves a lot, throws uh, punches, um, real hard, explosive punches. All of his punches are real hard and explosive. His combinations are explosive. You know what I'm saying? And when he hits you, it hurt, you know, um, because he's he's very, very athletic, both of them dudes. That whole camp, really. But, you know, both of the Charlo twins. Um, so, and and when he's really at his best, is not when he's emotional and fighting mad. It's when he is, when he is under control. And that's one of Jamal Charlo's best attributes as he fights really well under control um he don't throw a lot of wild looping punches he's really good at throwing at keeping his punches contained he's very defensively responsible as a habit i think uh Derek james has done a good job of making all his fighters defensively responsible when people were saying about errol spence's a defense, Errol Spence is a better def defender than Terrence Crawford. I mean, that statement sounds retarded now. But that was leading to that Terrence Crawford fight. It was Errol Spence is, is much better. His defense is much better. And it's not that his defense is much better. It's that he's defensively responsible. He's habitually defensively responsible. Doesn't that, that doesn't mean that you have really good defense. That just means that you do the right things. You know what I'm saying? What I mean by do the right thing is keep that hand, that left hand. You see Jamal, Jamal Charlo, when he throw, he throw, and then, like, as a reflex, he always checks with that left hand. He always with that left hand. Him, uh, uh, Errol Spence does it as well, and somebody who used to be really good at doing it, it was, used to be uh, Andre Ward. Andre Ward was real good at holding that left hand high. You know what I'm saying? That's being defensively responsible, you know. Um, so it's hard to catch Jermel Charlo without his hands. His hands are always here. So he could go here, he could go here, he could go here, he could go here. But it's very rare that he's, you know, doing stuff like that. Now, Jose Benavidez Jr., he does stuff like that. He's very defensively irresponsible holds his hands low he sticks his face out you know what I'm saying he thinks he's faster than he is because a lot of times he'll stick his face out hold his hands low or stick his hands out and then before he could respond bing he's hit he's tough so he could take it but he's not the most durable because he's been clipped so um so um you know so the def defense Charlo's more defensively responsible than Benavidez Benavidez likes to hold his hands low Benavidez likes to take chances but that's those are earmarks of emotional fighters you know emotional fighters sometimes gotta get hit in order to you know what I'm saying get in a bag Rocky Balboa is famously depicted as an emotional fighter for the most part you know what I'm saying um so, um, so yeah, that's pretty much the, 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 the breakdown of the two. Um, another thing that I, I don't like about Benavidez that he does, that he really needs to change. I don't know if, I don't know if his, um, 
right leg is the one that got shot. Not sure which one it was. But he has a very bad habit of standing his ground a little bit too much. What I mean by that is, is the same reason why I, you know, like, me and my sister was talking. My sister takes Muay Thai, and, you know, of course, I'm, I'm boxing. Now, I've taken a little Muay Thai. I'm, I'm familiar with Muay Thai. I've taken a little bit of Muay Thai, um, you know, and we offer Muay Thai classes at our gym. Um, we have an excellent Muay Thai instructor. His name is Jakar. Um, he's a tremendous guy, really good guy. I love him to death. Um, but he's really good at, at Muay Thai. Now, Muay Thai is tree trunk, rooted. The style of Muay Thai is the ultimate stand your ground, you know, style. You dig your feet in and you stand your ground. You come back on that back foot, but you stand, you, 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 you plant that back foot in the ground. And then you you kind of work off the back foot. You don't give ground in Muay Thai. Boxing, you give ground. Boxing, Muay Thai is like, you know, it's like a warfare where you, you know what I'm saying, you set up the lines and you everybody fire. And Boxing is guerrilla warfare. Boxing is hit, get out come from different angles come from nothing structured you know what i'm saying that's guerrilla guerrilla warfare is is not structured you know you know when you set up in your regiments and you you know you ooh, yeah, that's more muay thai so i bring up muay thai as a style because benavidez has a muay thai kind of a boxing style he doesn't like to give ground so what he does is he loads up all of his weight on his back foot. And if he has to give ground, if he have to move back, which is doesn't even he doesn't do it a lot. He'll rather just tree trunk. You know what I'm saying? Tree trunk. The wind is coming. The tree just sways on the trunk, relies on the strength of the trunk to hold it. That's what Benavidez does. He doesn't give ground. He doesn't step back with the back foot. I think stepping back with the back foot is a very underutilized skill in boxing. But if you look at the greats, they all do it. Create space by stepping back with the back foot and then bringing the front foot. As soon as you step the back foot back, the head moves with it. And then you bring the front foot to, to complete the the move by the time you recover with the front foot you've moved out of the way you know what i'm saying it's in the, the best do it step back with the back foot just clear a little bit of space and as soon as you recover bam you you in you you already in your stance so you can respond whether that's defend or attack um when you have to switch feet to retreat backwards you have to switch feet and then reset. That takes a little bit of time. When Benavidez does give ground, he switches his feet. But this is his back foot. His back foot stays there. Sometimes he leans back on the back foot. And then he takes that front foot and put it behind the back foot. Then he has to take the back foot, put it back behind the front foot again to reset. Instead of just back foot, front foot. Step back with the back foot, bring the front foot. Now you already reset. Two steps, you reset. Boom, boom, reset. Right? Instead of boom, and then boom. Okay? Not even two steps, it's one step. Pop, boom. Okay? Versus switch, and then switch back. Um, so Benavidez likes to rock back on that back foot a lot and absorb a lot of punishment. Is basically the point I'm trying to illustrate. And... Jamel Charlo is going to fuck him up off of that. He's going to take too many punches from Jamel Charlo. And the difference between Benavidez and Jamel Charlo, the, the biggest difference is the fact that Jamel Charlo has one punch knockout power. If you go and look at Jose Benavidez, in fact, I just got finished watching the video, so I know it exists. There's a, there's a highlight 
comparison. And it has like it goes back and forth from Jose Benavidez's knockouts, Jamel Charlo, Jamal Charlo's knockouts. Benavidez's knockouts, first of all, the only time you see dudes touch the canvas is when they're when you when you they show footage of lesser opponents. And you know it's lesser opponents when the, the, the video footage is bad quality and you know what I'm saying? It's the, you know, the, you know, you looking at them, their body don't look elite. They, you know what I'm saying? Like you could tell, like he's fighting. He's not. He's fighting bums, basically. When he gets up into the, you know what I mean, the more better looking footage and whatever, whatever, you see a lot of stoppages. You see a lot of stoppages. Ref stop the fight. Um, but you look at in comparison to J- Jamal Charlos. First of all, he's put quality opposition in the dirt you know what I'm saying J-Rock Williams and dudes like that like Benavidez has never put anyone in the dirt with one shot of that's have, that's that's the caliber of fighter of a J-Rock Williams and Charlo has a bunch of those on his resume of like one shot boom they drop whether the fight was ended right there or the fight was in over after the next sequence but he got the ability to touch you and you go to sleep. Another thing that he does very well, which will be the kryptonite to uh, Benavidez, if he hasn't fixed that problem, uh, he turns he turns opponents very well. He angles very well, especially when he get close and he get in there, boom, as soon as he clinch, he's turning you. And he'll sometimes do a complete circle. You know what I'm saying? Just to catch you coming out of that angle, figuring out where he is. Bang, he got you. He does that a lot, and he does that well. The counter for that is to step backwards. That's the counter. Benavidez don't like to step backwards. He likes to lean back on that back foot. So Jamal, Jamal Charlo, look for that being something that Jamal Charlo does to, to Jose Benavidez a lot. He leans back on that back foot. Jamal Charlo turns him. He turns on that back foot, but he's not going to be able to turn fast enough to recover, and Jamal Charlo is going to catch him a lot. He's going to catch him a lot. So, um, so yeah, good fight. I'm looking forward to it. I got Jamal Charlo winning by, by knockout. I think it's going to be a knockout. I think it's, it's going to either be a stoppage or a knockout. I think he's going to beat Benavidez up. I think it's going to be entertaining because both of them are entertaining fighters. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be entertaining. Benavidez, the thing I love about Benavidez is that he's a warrior. Like, he's going, whether he's losing or not, like, he's going to, you know, do his antics. And you know what I mean? You're going to see a lot of, he's a character. You know what I'm saying? He's a character in the ring. You know what I mean? But he makes a lot of mistakes. He leaves himself open. He's there to get hit. He's there to get hit. Uh, he will get hit. And he will get hit a lot. And and I, I personally think he's too small because he's he's pretty much at a disadvantage because all of the fights that he's really done well, he's done well against dudes smaller than him. You know what I'm saying? He's usually the bully. He got to be the bully. You know what I mean? Because he's an emotional fighter. Most of the time, the emotional fighter does well against the bully. I mean, being the bully, right? He's not the bully in this fight. You know what I'm saying? He's not the bully. He's a bully going against a a bully. Who will bully him? So, I got uh, Charlo by stoppage or knockout. Um, but that's another fight I'm looking forward to. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Let's talk about it, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.